Hi, this is Brandon Moon with Leland Fly Fishing. I want to welcome you to Fly Tying Night tonight. Tonight we're going to tie up a variation of the classic John Bar Copper John. This is our soft tackle version of this fly. We've caught a lot of fish using this pattern. The Copper John itself is very, very effective combined with the soft tackle that we put on this and your fly becomes absolute dynamite and will produce plenty of fish for you. <clears throat> it's also a pretty simple tie. So we'll get started tonight. Tonight we're going to tie on a size 14 ML 501 Tagata hook. This is a jig hook. It's a forged jig so it's going to be a little bit stronger than your standard wire. We're going to combine with this the slotted tungsten apple or light apple or light olive pale olive colored bead okay this is a 3.0 to pair up with that size 14 and you can see it's tied as a jig so that it rides inverted and gives a nice good drift without the snags on the bottom so we're going to go ahead and put the hook in the vise here now okay and we're going to be using Pell Olive 12 aught Classic Wax <clears throat> Thread by Semperfly. This is a single strand twist. We like it. It lays a nice smooth underbody. Lays flat. And it doesn't build up a lot of bulk. So I'm going to hold this thread at about a 45 degree angle and that's going to help me push each wrap into the previous wrap and give me a nice smooth underbody. We're just going to wrap this back to the bend of the hook, trim that off. Okay, now one thing I do differently is I'm going to actually build a little bulge back here on the back side. So I'm going to use a little bit of dubbing. I'm going to use for this pattern here that we're tying, this is an olive type pattern. I'm going to use this Bakuna dubbing. Okay, we're going to use the Green Peter. This is a kind of an light pale olive green but it's also a UV reflective so I'm going to put a little bit of my wonder wax on here I like my dubbing to be a little bit of UV just adds a little bit of flare I don't need very much dubbing that's too much it's about half of what I need so we're just going to put a nice little pinch on there and just create a nice small little dubby noodle on that thread. You can see there's not very much on there. I like this Bakuna dubbing. It dubs really nice and easy. Really, really buggy. Comes in a wide variety of colors. So only my imagination is what stops me with this. Okay, for the tail, I'm going to use some olive goose biots. Okay, so I need two of those for the tail. And I'm just going to pull off the two for my legs further on. Okay, now <clears throat> your biot has a natural curve to it. I want that curvature to go away from the hook. So I'm going to measure this tail out and I want this tail to be roughly the length of the hook shank so I'm going to tie that in I'm going to wrap it nice and secure now I'm going to go underneath that by it just to lock that in okay that way if I make my thread loose a little bit it's not going to move that by it it's going to hold in place so I'm going to take and do the same thing on this other side I'm just going to pull that tight just so it cinches down and then like before I'm going to lock that in. I can 
kind of maneuver those biots a little bit before I cinch this all the way down and secure that biot on the so I now I'm just going to tighten these down and bind them to the hook I clip them so that I wrap them up into the back of that bead okay now I'm gonna tie in some vivid green I don't have a label for it it's the 0.2 millimeter vivid green Semperfly tying wire okay I'm gonna tie this on the very top of the hook shank okay so I'm gonna actually push that wire up into the bead loose wrap then tight and I'm just gonna wrap it rearward I can kinda of use that wire just like I did the thread go rearward all the way back to the tie-in point of that tail because I'm using two wires I want one on top and then the other one's gonna be tied in on the side and that's just gonna allow me to get a nice smooth wrap. The other one looks more of an olive type color to me more than a bright chartreuse color but it's the chartreuse it's a pretty dull, dull chartreuse color and I'm just gonna put that on the side and I want that to go along the side of the hook shank and I run that wire all the way up towards that bead you can see it right there and I do that because this is supposed to be a heavy weighted fly so I'm not skimping out on any of that wire I've got the tungsten on there but add in that copper wire and I got a nice heavy fly okay now I'm gonna take this top one I'm gonna rotate it up top and I'm gonna pull both of those tight and start my wrap okay I'm gonna keep my wrap pretty tight I'm going to do two wraps, and then I'm going to take my thumb, I'm going to push those wraps in, make sure that they're pushed in together. Now I'm just going to take my rotary feature, I'm going to wrap this, and I'm going to leave just about a half of a bead length, length behind the bead where I stop. So I want to wrap this and give myself a nice good wire body. Okay, now I'm just going to secure that off with my thread. So I'm going to tie that in. And then we're going to helicopter finish. And I do one at a time. Just helicopter one it's done and I'm just gonna set that down so I can use it on the next one I tie there's the other one the cool thing about this pattern here is I like the two-tone wire a little bit better than the one tone I could if I was gonna tie a one color wire I'd actually use two strips I found that two wire wraps are a little bit easier for me to keep nice and compact and nice and neat but I can do a lot of different color combos with the biots, the bead and my wire choice here to do a lot of different things and I can tie this in a lot of different sizes I can tie this down to about a size 18 16 is usually the smallest that I'm going to tie it so I'm going to put a little bit of wax back on there and then I'm going to take another small fine pinch of dubbing and create another dubbing noodle. Okay, and this is going to help push my legs out and give them something to grip onto. Okay, so I'm just going to create a nice bulge there. And that's roughly about a bead, bead about a bead and a half length behind the bead and this is where I'm going to create my thorax and my legs 
and I took a couple leg or goose biots off. Again, I want this goose biot to curve away from the hook shank in my fly. I'm going to measure this so that, oh, and I got to invert this. I almost messed up there. So I got to invert this because it's on a jig hook. But I want that leg to go all the way just past that hook, hook point, the bend of the hook where the tail starts. So I'm going to do two wraps, tighten that down. Again, I'm going to go in front between the biot and the bead, and that's just going to secure in my biot there. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I don't like to put my biot 100% straight on the side. I don't like it on the top. I'm kind of a three-quarter, and I can kind of adjust a little bit with my biots before I secure them in real tight. I'm going to clip off those biots. I'm going to pull them. I'm going to run that thread behind it just to kind of push those little butt ends inward just a little bit. Now I'm going to take, I'm going to go over the top of that with just another pinch of dubbing. This is that same green Peter dubbing. Okay, and what I'm doing when I do this is I'm going to give this fly, and I didn't get quite enough, it's going to kind of go and hide those tag ends but it's also going to make those legs look as if they're protruding out of the side of the fly. Okay, now we've got those in there. I'm going to pull this back on top. You can see that this dubbing is really nice, buggy. I can trim up any long fibers if I want. Now I'm going to take, and this is a clear water JV hen pelt. Okay, it's got beautiful coloration to it. I'm going to take some a feather here from the side and let's see. And there's my feather. Kind of got that rusty look to it. I'm going to clear off all of the fluff on this. This hackle here is almost like a real dark dun with some rusty tips on it. All right, now I'm going to tie this in. You can see I've stripped the side off that's going to lay flat against the hook. There's my tie-in point. Now I'm just going to secure that in. Pull it back. Now I can trim that out. Okay, I'm going to trim that stem just a little bit. These are my favorite hackle pliers when I'm wrapping soft hackles. I'm just going to take that and grab that hackle stem. Now I'm going to wrap it. And as I wrap this, I'm going to palmer it back. Okay, this is important that. I wrap almost on top of one another with every wrap and this is going to help force my hackle fibers rearward. Ok. 
Okay. Now that I've got that, I'm just going to secure that in. Two wraps, pull it back, kind of secure it in one more time. Now I'm going to take and trim off this hackle stem. Okay. We'll just pull that in. We're going to fill in that bead with, with a little bit of thread and then we'll take and whip finish. This gives us a little bit of a oh. We'll just do that with fill finish filling that back in with the whip. Okay. Trim that off. You can see those fibers nice flowy fibers really really buggy looking bug there now I'm going to take my UV resin I'm going to put a little resin on here I'm going to take my bodkin I use for my resin I'm going to smooth this out across my bead up into the thread this resin is going to do a couple things it's going to help me secure in that knot which I'm not really worried about but also more importantly protect my bead from chipping you can see there's the UV characteristics in that dubbing we added on to that bead with that UV resin and there you have our copper john this is an olive copper john I really like the accents of this hackle. It's got the gingery rust dun color with kind of that dunnish gray colored in between. So thank you for joining us today. You guys have a wonderful evening. Make sure and hit the subscribe button, then the bell, and hit all so you can receive all notifications from us. And don't forget to hit thumbs up and comment on our posts.